more about distortion. And let's kind of go through a little summary of how we got this far. First, I talked about the Fourier series and how that you could take any repeating waveform and it's actually a sum of the fundamental frequency and some sinusoids of multiples of that fundamental frequency. Those are called harmonics. After we did that, we created some waveforms. We created a square wave and a uh, sawtooth wave, and we looked at the harmonics. Then the second thing I did was I took those waveforms and used a program called Adicity and uh, created them inside it, and then we listened to those waveforms. And then we listened to a guitar that had some stuff added to it that caused a uh, caused some uh, harmonics and uh, as, and that was called distortion and as we did that distortion it created a sound that's often used in rock and roll and maybe some other kind of music I guess it's used in country a lot of popular music and uh, so that was harmonics and it was caused by distortion and then distortion something that you do not usually want if you have a uh, high fidelity amplifier. So we talked about one way of getting distortion, actually several ways, but basically overdriving an amplifier and that caused it to clip the top of it. So today we're going to talk about some other kind of distortion. This is the kind that's used in some of the uh, distortion foot pedals or stomp pedals that are used by uh, some guitarists. And uh, it used to be called Fuzz, and I kind of like that name, so that's why I called these uh, this directory that I've got all this stuff located in, called it Fuzz. So the first kind we're going to talk about is clipping, a, uh, clipping it using a diode. So here on this amplifier, we're running a 500 hertz signal, 1 volt, and the amplifier itself is set up to... Uh, Multiply that by three times because it's the feedback resistor divided by the gain resistor, which is R1. That gives you a multiplier of two. And in this configuration, being a non-inverting amp, adds another one to that, so that makes three. So we're going to multiply this by three. But then once it comes out, we're going to uh, clip it because these diodes are basically going to short out the signal once it gets above about 0.7 volts. So we'll see what this one looks like. We'll run the simulation. And something didn't work. That figures. Okay, something's not happy here. So let's go back. And let's change this gain a little bit. Let's make it a little bit less. See if that fixes it. Oh, I checked all these. But Murphy says, nap, sometimes you mess up. Okay, now let's try simulate again. This time it works. And you see after it got about 0.7 volts, it clipped the top off of it. So it made it a fairly square wave. Okay, well let's just play with it a little more. We'll now go to... Uh, Put two diodes in series, and that should make it start clipping at 1.5 volts. One point, yeah, about 1.4. We'll run it, and now we only clip it. Yeah, we clip less of the wave there. By the way, this is symmetric, whereas when we were doing it with the uh, by overdriving the amplifier, we had one of these a little bit higher than the other one. The lower, the uh, negative voltage I believe was cutting off at a little higher volts. So now we're clipping it at that. Well let's go back and let's add three diodes. Two was good. Three's got to be better, right? And uh, okay. Let's go ahead and simulate. And uh, now we're clipping at 2.1 volts. Again, our gain was set for 3. So it's running pretty much a sine wave here at the uh, below that 
and then it clips, just clips the top off. That means that it's not the sharp wave that it would be if it was a square wave. It means that we probably do not have the high frequency components. And I hope to uh, come up with something where we can actually check and see what kind of frequencies we have. Alright, that's that type of uh, clipping that's done, which is also called a, um, eh, the brain's not working for the moment, but uh, that's another way of doing it. Let's go ahead and let's pull a different waveform up, so we'll, different circuit up. Now this one we have the, uh, the clamps, that's the term I was wanting. It clamps the voltage at a certain votes. Uh, so we got clamps at this one, but they're in the feedback circuit. And this makes kind of a really interesting waveform. So we will simulate this one. And then we'll talk a little bit about what's going on. And you see yeah, it is rounded. It looks a lot like a sine wave, but it's more rounded than a sine wave. And uh, it increases a lot here at the start, and then it starts rounding it off. So this one would be really good for creating just the low frequency kind of uh, harmonics and not the high frequency harmonics. Okay, let's go back and try to understand why this generates this kind of waveform. So we'll go back to the schematic. And you see that we have a, a 1,000 or 10,000 ohm gain resistor and a 10,000 ohm feedback resistor, but then we have these two diodes in parallel. So once it starts getting the voltages above 0 .5, 0 0.7 volts, these things start conducting. The deal is that it's not exactly 0 0.7 volts. That's our, in our head, simple model. Let's go into what the real model is for a uh, diode. So I do this diode test model here, and what I've got, I've got a, a current that I'm feeding into that diode. I'm going to measure the voltage across that diode. And then I got a 50 ohm feedback resistor, and that number was just kind of chosen to see what would work. And as this thing starts pushing more current through there, we get a voltage across this, this diode. So let's see what that looks like. And what I'm doing, I'm starting that at uh, one microamp, and I'm going up to uh, one milliamp. And I'm doing 200 points to, to do it, and I'm doing it all linear. So let's see what it looks like. We will run a simulation of that. And when we do, you see that the uh, it doesn't break over as a straight line. It breaks kind of as a curve right in here. And that curve is what's explaining what happens in our circuit there. Uh, it's not just a straight line, so that's why it tends to have that rounded top. Let's go back and look at the schematic here, and let's try it. Let's first run our simulation again. Take a look at our curve, and we see what that one looks like. It went up to 1.5, but it took it up to about right here, about 1, 0.7 before it started breaking. See if we can change that. So we will change first. Let's try changing this resistor. And it may or may not work, by the way. Uh, I've ran quite a few simulations and I about forgot which ones worked and which ones don't. So we'll double that well we'll double that part of the gain. The total gain is still you add an extra one out here, so it's it's two two times plus one, which would be three times the thing, so it should go quicker on the edges, so it should uh, should be straighter edges. Still only made it to 1.5, but you see it did go up a little bit faster, so we probably gained some higher frequencies. And then, uh, and then it's still rounded off the top of it. So we have some adjustment that we could play with here. Let's take that one back to 10,000. And let's change this one to 5,000. And let's 
see what we get this time. And we get about the same waveform we had by changing the uh, feedback resistor. Uh, 5,000 work. Let's see what happen if we uh, change it. And again, I'm going to change it to a point where the program will freak out. But hey, we're having fun. So we'll change this to uh, 2,000. And let's see what happened. And it didn't like it. <laughs> so let's go back. Change this thing back. Let's change it to 4,000 just to see what happened. And that's the nice thing about running simulations. Um, you can test different ideas. And you see we made it a little bit steeper on the sides here because we increased that gain, but then it rounded off and it always ends up about 1.5. This went just a skosh over. So this one would give a, a little bit better low frequency harmonics, but it wouldn't give the high frequency harmonics. And that might be the sound you want if you were making a uh, true fuzz box. And the link that I gave you last time, uh, he described a little bit of how he called the sound. I think he called this one a little warmer. Uh, I can't remember. Whereas he called the other sound a little more metallic. Uh, I'm not that much of a musician, so I wouldn't know. Anyhow, so we have played with uh, some various ways of clamping the output and getting various waveforms. We're starting to do a little bit of wave shaping here. And it was all done with uh, analog electronics before. Uh, we have a few more of these that we're going to deal with. And then there's a thing that I want to find out. Harmonics is just not a, a problem in the audio range. It's actually a problem in pretty much all frequency ranges. And uh, one of them that's becoming critical right now is in power. I hope to uh, do some simulations on that. But first I have to get a program working that I'm working on right now. So we can look at these frequency plots. That may take me about a week to get that going. I'll try to find some other interesting stuff for us to talk about in the meantime. Appreciate you watching. Hopefully you got something out of this. Uh, and there will be uh, eventually a link to my blog. And the link to my blog, I'll have uh, these this information on it. I'll have a little bit more information about the diodes. And also... In the previous blog, I had a, a lot of information about op-amp circuits. So, there's a lot of stuff there if you really want to go into it. And on the previous blog post, once you go to this one that's on this video, you click on previous. The previous blog post also had that one about uh, using it for music, musical instruments. So... There's a lot of stuff here if you really want to play with it. Appreciate you watching. Hopefully you got something out of this. Thank you. This is Gary Fox from Great Maker.